What's going on everybody? This match analysis is going to be looking at the Clasico between Real Madrid and Barcelona. Before we get into the tactics behind the match, check out OneFootball. It's a free app in the description below. It's the best app out there to follow all your favorite teams, games, updates on news like transfers and anything else you could think of all things football it's the app i use to get all my latest updates keep track of when the games are happening and it's super easy to use that's me to the right of the screen just going through the app showing you guys the layout again there's a link in the description below it's completely free so show your support get the latest updates on your favorite teams download the app your support would be greatly appreciated and also as always check out my books online on amazon the links to those are in the description as well and I'm using keyframe to make this match analysis there's a link to that as well in the description if you want to check any of that out that would be great and let's get into the tactics behind the match so Barcelona ended up winning the match by a score of four goals to nil against Real Madrid Real Madrid are at home but wearing an all black kit for a promotion for their team although it didn't go very well on the field for them as we see Barcelona started with their back four and a natural 4-3-3 from them with Aubameyang as the number nine who did stay a bit higher and at times would drop, drop in to initiate a third man movement or attract a defender to then create space in behind. But one difference in this match is the role of Aubameyang using his player qualities more on the shoulders of defenders and picking and choosing when he would drop in the blind spot of the Real Madrid players. Real Madrid started the match in a 4-2-3-1 or 4-4-2 shape but with a lot of staggering and a big mix between man orientation and spatial orientation principles so what would often happen is they would rely on cover shadows from the first line of pressure and then have some man orientation roles between the lines to then isolate the threat of Barcelona but what would happen more often than not is the free player like Sergio Busquets would often be easily accessible via a third man option or a midfielder would go and jump to Sergi Busquets and then a player free between the lines. It was even as easy for Barcelona to even just circulate the ball quick enough, allow Real Madrid to shift without unison and target the player between the lines. Sometimes it was that easy as just quickly circulating possession and playing a third line pass between the lines in the blind spot of the Real Madrid midfield. Now we see Real Madrid defending a bit deeper and their wingers would often track runners from the fullbacks here. Jordi Alba goes higher. Often the winger for Real Madrid would drop deeper to then use man orientation against the advancing fullback but the wide rotation for Barcelona saw their 4-3-3 take up an asymmetric shape with then Pedri on the left half space and Frankie de Jong in the right half space. And here we see the spatial and man orientation clash of the Real Madrid system. So we have our two holding midfielders for Real Madrid and with the wingers orientated to the fullbacks of Barcelona, this would often leave gaps between the lines and broken connections defensively between the wide midfielders and the central midfielders for Real Madrid. This would often create free players between the lines that were often exploited. It was also very easy for Barcelona to manipulate Real Madrid's shape by simply inverting one of their wingers and releasing Jordi Alba up the field. So Jordi Alba then finds himself in the blind spot and in space of his man marker and now we have a pinning defense very narrow and a back four that's very narrow allowing for then more space to be created for players between the lines in dangerous position. Now as the second half went on and the score got more and more ended it with 4-0. Now in the second half Barcelona looked to solidify their possession control transitions and see out the game with a clean sheet. So this meant that their back four would go narrow and their fullbacks would take up a bit more narrow position allowing the ball to move quicker in their first line of build up giving more freedom to their wingers in wide areas and allowing them to transition quicker to defense if Real Madrid were to win the ball. So then we also see why circulation was so easy for Barcelona because it could be ignited by a simple third man concept with a number eight dropping and finding the weak side central deep weak side central defender and then he'd be free and out to circulate play without any pressure. Real Madrid's build up consisted of their central defenders maintaining a narrow positioning 
defending right next to their goalkeeper. Their fullbacks are wide and they have a single pivot. Barcelona would then press in a 4-1-3-2 that saw them have direct access from their two central forwards, pressing the Real Madrid central defenders using their cover shadow to block access to certain areas and having their deeper midfield three have access to the wide areas while staggering themselves in the central three corridors to have a higher level of spatial control in the center of the field forcing Real Madrid to play in a wider area. As we see here, now in the 3 4th press, we start to see the 4-1-3-2 with Busquets going deeper and staggering the midfield, looking to control the space between the lines against Real Madrid. So we have some players between the lines for Real Madrid, which wasn't always the case in their offensive phase. But here we have the two strikers splitting their access between their single pivot of Real Madrid, making him unavailable in possession, forcing Real Madrid to play into wider areas, which would then be a point where Barcelona could isolate the ball and win the ball back transitioning higher up the field. But with Busquets on a deeper line than the rest of the midfielders, this offers a little bit of staggering and gives them more control when Real Madrid were in possession. Now in the last stage of the match, we saw Barcelona look to play more of a 4-5-1. It gave them fluidity and stability in their defensive phase with Aubameyang as their number nines as a good outlet for transitions and by having a 4-5-1 they were able to use more flexibility in the midfield allowing players to drop between the lines limiting the availability of Real Madrid players and allowing their wide midfielders to then track fullbacks if they were to make runs forward. Now Real Madrid had many different offensive structures and movements throughout the match. None were very effective because of the lack of available presence they had between the lines. So here we have, after substitutions, two players coming into the match and playing in a four-man midfield shape. Now many a times, the Barcelona spatial control would be very good, and players from Real Madrid would have to drop deeper in order to receive the ball, which would then just make it easier for Barcelona to defend against. And with the 4-5-1, they had players in both half space is with vertical mobility to drop into these areas and with a bombing able to then cover the strong side single pivot allowed them to control Real Madrid in possession even when they made changes to get more occupation between the lines that's where we're going to wrap up the analysis and I'll see you in the next one